Welcome back, you spectacular individuals, to Thirst and Vanity. Um, I had a week off, and now we are back in action, having a wonderful, wonderful time. I basically went away for the Easter to spend some time with my partner and her child, because it's the only time that I really get to bond, do the whole bonding thing. Uh, with them both and yeah, it was great. It was wonderful. It was great to go and spend that time with them and Now we're back now we're back doing bits and pieces. So today what I thought I would do is look at love languages Because we all know that love languages are a thing there are a variety of different types of love languages and within the realms of relationships and bits and pieces and all, and not only like romantic relationships but like all relationships love languages are a big thing or a big thing you got to deal with and take into a consideration in fact if you want any kind of dynamic with another human being you need to take into consideration their languages and what have you now it's really interesting to me because from where i come from like, I am a very happy-go-lucky scamp. I have lived a wild life of hedonism and enjoyment and, the, like, ridiculous antics and the amount of things that I have learned in my life because of the peculiar scenarios that I have found myself in has been quite outrageous. But, but for example, like my partner, she's had a very different walk of life so far. And those walks of life have sculpted us into being the people that we are today. And it took me a while to really realize that the kind of love languages that I have, that I naturally adapt to, are not the love languages that she naturally adapts to. And it took me a while to realize that just because things aren't being reciprocated in the way that my mind thinks they should be reciprocated doesn't mean that there is an issue in the relationship. And that's where love languages gets really quite important. So, I found a love language test, a quiz online of love languages. And I thought we would do that together, because I thought that would be quite entertaining. When I say together, I mean, I'm going to do it, and you're going to follow along to learn how I do it, you know? Okay, what are the love languages? Okay, first of all, we have words of affirmation. People with words of affirmation as a love language value verbal acknowledgement of affection, including frequent I love yous, compliments, words of appreciation, verbal encouragement, and often frequent digital communication like texting and social media engagement. Then we have quality time. People whose love language is quality time feel the most adored when their partner actively wants to spend time with them and is always down to hang out. They particularly love when active listening, eye contact, and full presence are prioritized hallmarks in the relationship. Next is acts of service. If your love language is acts of service, you value when your partner goes out their way to make your life easier. It makes things like bringing you soup when you are sick, making you coffee for the morning, or picking up dry cleaning for you when you've had a busy day at work. So doing things that will help them out. And I enjoy doing those things. So far, I would say that uh, there's elements of all of these things that I enjoy but I think that there's definitely one that prioritizes over, if I'm correct in my assumptions. Gifts. Gifts are pretty straightforward love language. You feel loved when people give you visual symbols of love. As Chapman calls it, it's not about the monetary value, but the symbolic thought behind the item. People with this style recognize and value the gift-giving process, the careful reflection, the deliberate choosing of the objects to represent the relationship, and the emotional benefits from receiving the present, which is to say is different from somebody just being greedy and wanting all of the bits and pieces, you know? I want all of the things. Give me all of the bits and pieces. It's different. It's about the thought that goes into it, not necessarily the monetary value, which is a, a very clear and interesting point and difference to note, you know? And finally, physical touch. People with physical touch as their love language feel loved when they receive physical signs of affection, including kissing, holding hands, cuddling on the couch, and sex. Physical intimacy and touch can be incredibly affirming and serve as a powerful emotional connector for people with this love language. 
Okay, so there's our five, our five tantalizing love languages. So this is it, the love language quiz. And I will put the link down below in the description so that you can find out what your love language is as well. And you're not going to be sat there quizzical about how you may fit in with other people. I don't know much about like the way this quiz works or how it's going to go down. I am intrigued by it to see if... It says that my love languages are what I believe my lo love languages to be, or whether it says something completely different. And I'm really intrigued as to how it will, like, whether it'll go into how to approach people with different love languages. Because it's very important to me that I share that experience with, for example, my partner, you know? So let's start. Start love language. I am an adult. How do you describe myself? Definitely in a relationship. It's more meaningful to me when I receive long loving note text message for no special reason from my loved one. My partner and I hug. Who I mean I mean I appreciate both, but I, I think out of the two the hug is definitely more the the one that means more to me, you know? It's more meaningful to me when I can spend alone time with my partner, just the two of us, or my partner does something practical to help me out. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. That kind of thing. More meaningful to me when my partner gives me a little gift as a token of our love, or I get to spend uninterrupted leisure time with my partner. Uh, yeah, le the uninterrupted leisure time. I, as much as I do enjoy little trinkets of gifts and what have you, I have to say that I much prefer to spend time with them. Okay, it's more meaningful to me when my partner unexpectedly does something for me, like filling my car, doing the laundry, my partner and I touch. I don't want my partner to do all the bits and pieces that I could do, you know? More means to me when my partner puts her arms around me when I'm in public or my partner surprises me with a gift. Probably put their arms around me. I don't, I don't need objects. I'd, I'd much prefer somebody's time and attention, you know? When I'm around my partner, even if we're not necessarily doing anything, or I hold hands with my partner. Um, time and attention. I like, I like the physical touch. I'm a touchy person. I'm a touchy, touchy, feely person. You know, it's just the way, it's just the way I am. More meaningful to me when my partner gives me a gift or I hear I love you from my partner. Like, I definitely, I hear I love you. So long as it's not used too often. So long as it's not used, if they use it all of the time, then I would hate to, not that I feel like the emotion behind it would be diminished at all, but I would hate to feel like, like I would hate the concept of it becoming too familiar like I didn't have the gravity in it anymore I, I wouldn't want to get too used to that you know more means when I sit close to my partner or I'm complimented by my loved one for no apparent reason Ooh, that's an interesting one I think I'd go for the the complimented for no apparent reason more meaningful to me when I get the chance just to hang out with my partner I'm unexpected small gifts from my partner uh, hang out. When I hear my partner tell me I'm proud of you or my partner helps me with a task. Probably the proud one. When I get to do things with my partner, I hear supportive words from my partner. Depends on what the things are. If they're like leisurely activities. Like fun hobby type things. Then I'd rather do those with my partner. But if it's just like stuff like chores like cleaning the house and stuff like that i'd rather just do it and let my partner have put their feet up you know and chill out and just zen for a bit and let me just get on with all the bits and pieces so they don't have to do the stuff you know here's supportive words from my partner <sighs> all the same that like as much as i do love this i like i'm gonna assume it's like a leisure activity and i'm gonna go with that one more meaningful to me when my partner does things for me instead of just talking about doing nice things. Or I feel connected to my partner through a hug. Yeah, the hug, definitely. More meaningful when I hear praise from my partner. My partner gives me something that shows that they were thinking about me. Ooh, that's a difficult one. Praise versus thinking about. I, 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 as much as I do love the praise um i can't i wouldn't say that it's needed i'm a very self-confident guy you know 
So I'm gonna go with the like like it's really nice to receive like a little something and just be like, oh well, you know, I was thinking about you, so this. You know? When I'm able to be around my partner or I get a back rub or a massage from my partner. I like to be the I like to be the one that does the massaging. I like to be the one that does the massaging. So if it was the other way around, like I just like to be around them, but if it was the other way around, then it'd be alright. If it was like I like to be around my partner or I get to give them a back rub or a massage, then I would prefer that one because I much prefer giving that that relief of tension, you know? Go with the around one. Uh, when my partner reacts positively to something I've accomplished or my partner does something for me that I know they don't particularly enjoy. Or I don't like them doing anything they don't particularly enjoy. So that one. My partner and I kiss frequently. Love this. I sense my partner is showing an interest in things that I care about. No, nope, kiss frequently. They, uh, as far as I'm concerned, my darling doesn't need to uh, be interested in the things that I am passionate about. And that is perfectly okay. That is perfectly all right. I would much rather have that tender moment between us, you know? When my partner works on a special project with me that I have to complete, okay? Or my partner gives me an exciting gift. I would, uh, see, I've got a thing about obligation. I wouldn't want anybody to do something that they feel obliged to do. Ever. For any matter. Like, the, there's no part of me that wants them to feel obliged to do something with me. And that is, it's like, that's working on a special project that I have to complete, not that we have to complete. So I'm going to go with Exciting Gift. It's more meaningful to me when I am complimented by my partner on my appearance, or my partner takes the time to listen to me and really understand my feelings. I mean, she does both of these. <laughs> Uh, what's more important to me? Uh, probably the the taking the time to listen and understand my feelings. As much as compliments are fine, like I said, I'm quite a self-confident person. So, yeah, takes the time to actually listen and pay attention and, and you know. Uh, more meaningful when my partner and I share non-sexual touching in public or my partner offers to run errands for me. Non-sexual touching. More meaningful to me when my partner does a little bit more than their normal share of the responsibilities that we share around the house, etc. Or I get a gift that I know that my partner put thought into choosing. Definitely. Always the thought one. Like, them putting in more effort to do chores. Like, I don't really get bothered by chores. Like, sometimes if I'm really busy or I'm particularly fatigued or I'm just in a bad mental headspace, then I will get, like, bogged down with stuff and the chores might build up. But I don't feel like a like it's a problem to do them for me personally when I actually get around to doing it so I'd much rather the alternative it's more meaningful to me when my partner doesn't check their phone while we're talking or my partner goes out of their way to do something that relieves pressure on me I am really really bad at this and or I certainly was really bad at it. And there was a whole section at the beginning of our relationship where we had to have a serious conversation about this because during the pandemic, the way that I got through it all was by being a workaholic, which with it being all online means that I was just checking my phone all the time. All the time. And uh, yeah, there was definitely like a, a, a tough conversation there where my partner was like, look... I feel like you're ignoring me because when we're in the middle of a conversation, if it's not something that has got your rapt attention immediately, you'll drift off and check your phone. And then even if I am paying attention to what she's saying, it was that whole, it doesn't seem like you're paying attention, which is the reason why it's rude, realistically speaking. It's, it's a very rude thing to do, to, to be in the middle of a conversation and be like, oh, yeah, 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 all right, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. You know, it that's that's just very rude. And because I'd spent so long not round people, I got out of the habit of remembering that. So I think I prefer this one. I do prefer them to do something that if if I'm having a particularly stressful time and they go out of their way to take that some of that pressure off me, uh that's yeah, I would do the same for them, you know? It's more meaningful to me that I can look forward to a holiday because of the a gift I anticipate receiving. Huh? 
I will hear the words. I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, I'm as surprisingly for somebody who is quite materialistic. I love outfits. I love clothes. I love ornaments. I love all the bits and pieces. Considering I love all of those things, I don't put too much into gift receiving. Like, it's nice when somebody puts thought into the gift that they give me, which is cool, but I don't anticipate the gift. Like, when a birthday comes around, I don't think about the presents that I'm going to receive. I have more interest in spending time with the people around because objects are objects, and that's great and dandy, and I love them. But usually when I'm the one that's purchasing them... <laughs> Usually if there's a thing that I want, I will find a way to raise money or save money to get it. But that's on me. When it comes to other people's gifts and stuff, I'd much rather give them a gift than receive a gift. Very much a giver, not a taker, you know? More meaningful to me when my partner brings me a little gift after they've been traveling out, traveling without me. Okay. Or... My partner takes care of something that I'm responsible to do, but I feel too stressed to do at the time. Yep, yeah, definitely this one. More meaningful to me when my partner doesn't interrupt me while I'm talking, or gift giving is an important part of our relationship. Oh, they, you see, this one's an interesting one because it's more meaningful to me. Gift giving is an important part of a relationship, but as I just said, that's on me. Like, I like to be the one that's giving the gift. I like to be the one that's... Putting that little smile on their face. My partner doesn't interrupt me while I'm talking. I mean, she never does. So go with this one because gift giving is an important part of the relationship, but only on... But everything so far has been geared towards receiving of gifts. Uh, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go with this one. More meaningful to me when my partner helps me out when they know I'm already tired or I get to go somewhere where I'm spending time. Always spending time. I had the fatigue and tiredness is just part of existence uh, when you're as busy as I am, so I'd much rather spend the time with them, you know? It's more meaningful to me when my partner and I are physically intimate. Ooh. My partner gives me a little gift that picks up. Oh, intimate. Oh, wait. Let's read it all. Let's read it all. I'm really bad for half reading things, okay? My partner gives me a little gift that they picked up in the course of their normal day. No, if physically intimate, I am a hypersexual individual, and there is an emotional bond with that physical intimacy that uh, I definitely love and adore, you know? Especially when, like, there's a difference between, like, sex and making love. And, yeah, it's <laughs> great. It's more meaningful for me when my partner says something to encourage me. Mm -hmm. Or I spend time in a shared activity or hobby with my partner. Uh, spending the time with them. Yeah, definitely. More meaningful to me when my partner surprises me with a small token of their appreciation, or my partner and I touch a lot during the normal course of the day. Definitely the touch. I am a touchy-feely individual. It's more meaningful to me when my partner helps me out, especially if they know, if I know they're already busy, or I hear my partner specifically say, I appreciate you. Appreciate you, definitely. There's something about it when, yeah, they just reach out and they're just like, I appreciate you. Usually out of nowhere as well. There's definitely been times where... I've just been doing things that I consider to be normal relationship stuff, you know? Normal things that I do in a relationship or I would do in a relationship. This is just my casual day-to-day. -day. These are the things that I do because I appreciate you, I love you, and I want you to be happier. And the level of appreciation that my partner gives me because of those is... At the beginning of the relationship, it was quite confusing to me. Because I was like, this is just standard stuff. But now that we've grown together, that understanding of the appreciation that she gives me is genuinely really heartfelt. Genuinely really, really heartfelt. I also think there's possibly a big part of me that was dismissive of that appreciation because I didn't want the praise of it. I, I was just like, oh, well, this is just what the way I am. This is just the way I am. This is just the way I am. And actually, that undermined her appreciation. That undermined her gratitude. And I didn't want to do that. So that was a learning curve from our relationship as well, you know? It's more meaningful to me when my partner and I embrace after we've been apart for a while, or I hear my partner say how much I mean to them. Oh, this one's a difficult one, because I love hearing how much I mean to her. But because I love hearing how much I mean to her. 
this, that physical touch tells me everything I need to know without words. And we're in a long distance relationship as well. So like that first moment when we connect after however long it's been just is everything. So yeah, definitely that one. Okay, my primary love language is physical touch. Well, I could have told you this. Ah, 110%. I could have told you this. I required no such thing. You know, I, definitely physical touch is my love language. I like to hold hands. I like to be touchy-feely. I am hypersexual, as we discussed. Primary love language is physical touch. Trademarked physical touch, obviously. Your love language overflows with physical touch. You long for hand-holding and hugs. Your warm embrace or simple pat on the back helps you feel connected and cherished. Touch creates a bond of connectedness. And for you, it communicates a love and affection more than words ever could. I mean, that's entirely true. That is entirely true. And only $35 for a 15-page personalized deep dive into your unique love language. As much as that is tempting, I'm good. However, as much as I enjoyed the quiz in itself, I am not prepared to pay $35 to find out a 15-page document about my personal love language. I don't know, Spectrum, potentially? I'm sure that those people who genuinely really need it, like if you are a person who is really struggling in your relationship or you are finding you and your partner are constantly clashing, then it may well be worth spending the $35 on getting that breakdown so that you can learn about each other's love languages better, learn about how to genuinely appreciate each other on a more intimate level. But I don't feel that I need that. My relationship is glorious. However, we can look elsewhere on the uh, internet to find out what physical touch as a love language actually means. Understanding physical touch as a love language. If your love language is physical touch, that means you prefer physical expressions of love over all other expressions, such as verbal, complimentary, or gifts. Note that physical touch as a love language is not all about sex, although sex can be an important aspect of a romantic relationship. For me, it's very, very important, but it is not the be-all and end-all. A hug, a shoulder squeeze, a handhold, even a pat on the back can be an expression of love that is just as meaningful to your partner. If you're in a non-sexual relationship or you're unable to have sex with your partner for some reason, there's a list of them here. It says long distance, postpartum, PTSD. But I would also add in stuff like vaginismus, which is a condition that a lot of people with vulvas have, where it's extremely painful to have sex. The anxiety um, and mental blocks that some people have in around vaginismus cause basically the muscles to clamp shut. And it just makes the entire process uh, extremely painful for the person with a vulva. But also on top of that, stuff like asexuality. If you are a person that just doesn't like sex, it's not that there's anything wrong with you. It's just that that is your sexuality. You are very interested in them as a person, in having a relationship, having that connection, but not in the coital engagement variety. It says here, don't worry. We explore easy ways to give and receive physical touch no matter where you physically or mentally are with your partner. This may seem self-explanatory, but there are both intimate and non-intimate touches that can and should be used to show your partner love. That is true. Intimate touching would be kissing, holding hands, cuddling, skin-to-skin -skin touching. I can honestly say there's nothing better in my regards. I never feel quite as connected to my partner as when we are having naked cuddles in a non-sexual variety, you know? And then non-intimate touch would include rubbing your partner's back, sitting side by side, tickling, that kind of thing. Although saying that, I am also aware that tickling can definitely be an intimate side of things as well. It just depends on what kind of mood you're both in and how you're both feeling about stuff. It says here, if you're in a long distance relationship, which as I mentioned, me and my partner are. If you're in a long distance, cuddling, kissing, holding hands isn't an option, but video chats have made it possible to be together when you're not actually together. Yes, 100%. 100%. When my partner sends me a video in the morning of 
her before she goes into the office or what have you. I, I just love it. I absolutely love it. It brings a right little smile to my face to see her beautiful face, you know? And then, of course, when we actually see each other, the physical touch becomes, like, it, it's kind of like builds up and builds up and builds up because you're not allowed to have the physical touch because of the distance. And then you get together and it all just comes out with so much touching and holding and hugging and I'm just very physical. I'm a very touchy-feely person. As I've said many times in this video, I'm a very, very touchy-feely person and I love it. So yeah, there is my whole dynamic of my love language. There are definitely elements of the other love languages that I genuinely enjoy and indulge in. I very much love giving gifts. I love helping them out. I love the massagey intimateness but yeah the one prominent one for me is definitely physical i'm a very physical person very touchy-feely very hypersexual very all up in her delightful business you know Thank you very much, everybody, for watching this delightful video. I very much appreciate it. And for sticking around for the uh, the whole thing. I want to say a massive thank you because uh, over the little break area that I didn't post last week, we actually hit a thousand subscribers, which is like the first check mark to getting monetized content on the platform. So a massive, massive thank you to all of you beautiful individuals who have subscribed to help me progress into a, the wonderful world of YouTube. I very, very much appreciate it. For all those people that haven't subscribed yet, I would uh, ask you to consider subscribing. I would very, very much appreciate that, uh, especially if you would like to see more peculiar dynamics around life, the universe and everything. Very specifically hedonism, you know, always good to learn about things that make us smile. And if you haven't done already, I would really appreciate you clicking that cheeky little like button because it helps in the algorithms and doing all the bits and pieces. Also, while you're at it, if you happen to uh, have an idea of other quizzes you would like to see me do, I know a few people have been interested in seeing my apologies quiz result because I have a passionate hatred of apologies, then please put them down in the comments and I will happily get to it. Also, tell me what your love language happens to be. If you are seeing certain things, you're like, do you know what? This is something that really ticks my box and the ways that you express love and very interestingly, the ways that you have expressed love and received love with partners who are a different love language to you and more specifically, you're happy to share that information, I would love to hear about it. I would genuinely love to hear about it, you know, because mine and my partner's love languages are very, very different, but that doesn't mean that the relationship isn't going to work. We work amazingly well. It's just about understanding each other, as with all relationships, you know? I will see you next Friday, you delightful individuals, for another tantalizing video. Until then, follow me on all cheeky little social medias. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash valenvain. TikTok at Valenvain, and of course, Instagram at Valenvain. These are the main platforms where you can see most of my existence of life. So please, by all means, go and indulge in all of my other bits and pieces, you know? And until next time, you delightful individuals, don't do anything I wouldn't do, because if I wouldn't do it, it'll fucking kill you, okay?